Hello everyone. So as you can see, your girl just kind of turned on the camera and it is what it is. Like my bed, I'm washing my comforter. My hair is looking a mess. Um, I, I look tired. I don't know what's going on, but y'all, I just want to speak on the glory, the majesty, and the splendor of our God. So I was reading with my grandmother um, during our Bible study time, and one of these scriptures that we read just like exploded in my mind, and I'm like, whoa. So it really speaks on God's might. Now, when you read the Old Testament, it doesn't have to, you don't have to look at it like, oh my gosh, like, why is God killing all these people? Why is he so angry? You don't have to look at it like that. But instead, because the Old Testament was before Jesus saved us, you don't have to look at it like that. So the way I look at it is like, wow, God is so powerful. He's so mighty. And in the Old Testament, yes, people were punished and these tribes were punished for their actions. But we, um, I'm sorry, what in the world was on my contact? But we don't look at it that way because it is the Old Testament and Jesus has already fulfilled the law. We can look at this like, look at God's power, look at his might. So I was reading the scripture when the people of Babylon were being destroyed. Um, they were being destroyed for their their sins and the things that they were doing um, against God. But this scripture says, the earth quakes and trembles because the Lord's intentions against Babylon stand. This is Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 29. But that is like, that is so powerful. It says, because his intentions against Babylon stand, the earth quakes and trembles like for God to have an intention and for the earth to quake and tremble because of that intention that shows how powerful and mighty God is see if he was able to speak the world into existence that means all of the small atoms and the molecules and all these things had to come together because his word stands because his intentions stand all of creation has to bow at the name like all of all of everything not only came together because of God's word but has to move and operate at God's word see just like creation if God has spoken a word over your life best believe that that word will come to pass see the bible says that um the word of the lord shall not come back void but it shall accomplish what it was set out to accomplish so if god has spoken a word over you you need to believe that thing like there's there's nothing that can stand in the way of that word being accomplished because if the bible says it it is true. If God says that you are loved, if God says that you are worthy, if God says that you are chosen, if God says that you are forgiven, you need to stand on that word because that word will not return void. You need to stand on that word because it is true. And if creation testifies the glory and splendor and majesty of God, so should your life. So that means you need to walk knowing that you are forgiven. That means you need to walk in the love that God has already bestowed on you. You need to walk in your purpose. You need to walk knowing that you are wonderful, that you have been fearfully created, that you are beautiful, that you are chosen, that you are God's. You are God's child. If he calls you adopted, that means you're adopted. So live and rest in that sonship that you have with the Father because of Jesus Christ. If the Bible says that he, God has rescued you from the domain of darkness and transferred you into the marvelous light and the son that he loves, which is Jesus Christ, that's in Colossians, 
if you, if the Bible says that, you need to stand on it. I've had to learn this because God's word is eternal. God's word is everlasting. It has been here before time began. The Bible says that be, um, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was God. In the beginning was the word and the the earth, creation, everything is built on the word. Everything is built on the word. So whether or not you you think it, whether or not you can believe it, just trust that if God says you are forgiven, you're forgiven. If God says that you are loved, you are loved. If God says that you are rescued, you are rescued. If God says that you are beautiful, you are beautiful. If God says that you are worthy, you are worthy. If God says that you are free, you are free. And by the way, I'm not just saying these things to say them, but the Bible, the word of God says them. The word of God says all of these things. If the Bible says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. If the Bible says that God is working all things out for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes, that means that all things are working together for your good. If the Bible says that when you believe in Jesus Christ, you will li live eternal life, that means that when you believe and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, now that we can get into that later because it, it may look one way, but when you, to believe in your heart, your action should follow. So that's another thing. But if that's what the Bible says, that is true. Like if the Bible says that you are free, whom the sun sets free is truly free indeed. That means that you are truly free indeed. There's nothing that will stand in the way of your freedom because the Bible says that you are free. So stand on the word of God today. Because just like it says in Jeremiah, when the Lord has an intention, and in this case, it was for Babylon to fall, but that's, you know, that's something else. But if the earth quakes and trembles because of God's intention, what will it do with God's word? If God can think it and the earth can respond, how much more if he can say it? The waves and the winds all obey the Lord and and do and do and operate at his command. So how much more does your life that God created have to align with God's word? Just think about that. And I say that in the sense that um I say it in the sense that your your life should align with God's word. And also that your life should reflect God's word. Those are kind of two different things. But the, the main point is that if God says it, it is so. That's why sometimes when I pray, I have to say, God, I believe, help my unbelief. Now I pray this prayer in Jesus' name, believing that if it has been said in your word, it is so. Because if it has been said in God's word, it is so. His word cannot return to him void. But it is so. It is so and so it is. Someone needs to hear that tonight. It is so and so it is. So it is over your life. So it is for your future. So it is for your purpose. So it is in your freedom dealing with that addiction you may be dealing with. So it is. So it is that you are free indeed. So it is that you are worthy. So it is that you are loved. So it is that you have been rescued. So it is that you are no longer bound. So it is that you have eternal life. So it is that your salvation is secure. So it is. So it is. So it is. If you, we can't even like 
comprehend all of God's word. We can't even like comprehend all of his promises and all of his declarations over our lives in his word. But if, if we even began to, like it would change the trajectory of our lives. If we truly began to rest in God's word, if we truly began to believe what he says about us, that would change the trajectory of our lives. So I encourage you today, stand on the word of God. It is a firm foundation that cannot be shaken ever, ever in eternity. Why? Because God's word is eternal. God's word is everlasting. It cannot be shaken. It cannot be moved. It cannot be hindered. That's why don't let the devil tell you that because of something you've done in your past, that God's word will not come to pass because it shall come to pass. It cannot return to him void, but it has to accomplish all that it was set out to. The Bible does not say that when God spoke creation, that um, the, the stars paused, that the stars hesitated. It doesn't say that the land slowly uh, formed, but it says, God said, let there be light. And there was light. Like it doesn't say God said, let there be light and the light paused and then came like God said there, let there be light. And there was light. Let, um, what did it say? Let the something hover over the, I, Lord, please help me, Jesus. But all that to say, God's word cannot return to void. It has to accomplish all that it was set out to. I just want to read that because I believe that that, that declaration alone says so much for our faith. Like it. I mean, God's word, he created the entire earth, the entire world in six days. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let there be light and there was light. Um, then it says, let, or then it says, let there be an expanse between the waters, separating water from water. So God made the expanse. Like it said, it doesn't, there's no hesitation, but it's, so it is. God said this, so it is. God said this, so it is. Just like that. What has God said about you that you are not believing? What does God, God's word say about you that you are not believing? Because if his word cannot return void, then why is it taking us so long to believe what he says? Why, why does it take us so long to just believe what God says in his word? Straight, plain, you are loved. You are forgiven. Who the sun sets free is truly free indeed. You are worthy. You have been called. You have been chosen. You have been sealed. Why does it take us so long to believe? Point is, we have to. Because... His word is everlasting. There's nothing that can hinder it, but it, it, it is so. It is so, and so it is. So that's all I had to share. Um, I am going to, I don't, that kind of just came and I don't know, someone need to hear that, you know, God's word is everlasting, but I'm going to get back to doing my homework studying for my test tomorrow and, you know, getting ready for all that stuff. But I love you guys. And I hope that you go throughout this week knowing and believing that it is so, it is so over your life. As God has pronounced it, as God, as God has said it, it is so. Don't let the enemy tell you that it it is not. Like, don't let the enemy tell you that you are not forgiven. Don't let the enemy tell you that you suck. You don't suck. You are wonderful. You are amazing. God created you in his image. You are very good. He said that you are very good. So walk in it and believe it. 
Love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.